But I think that <laughs> well, I, I would say there are three factors to still give Rakim the slight edge. Um, one, when you're the first to do it a certain way, you will always be the first to do it. You know, Coltrane played two notes at the same time. Rakim rhymed in paragraph form. Before him, no one was producing lyricism in hip hop on that literary level, just with the structure of it alone. So just that aspect of him being the first to say, oh, follow the leader, I'm going this way. And everyone's saying, we're right behind you. Um, that, you know, that will always be belonging to Rakim. Okay, let um, me push back on your first point before you move on and keep the other points in mind. Just okay. because you're the first to do it doesn't mean that you're the best to do it. You don't see the evolution of Nas's rhyme ability, his cadence, his ability to not only his internal rhyme scheme, but the rhyme in between, the break, catch Absolutely. back on the next slide. Uh, Elgin Baylor was the first high flyer that we know about in NBA history. But then there was Cardi Hawkins, then there was Dr. J, there was Julius Irvin, who came along in the 70s, who, was, who led a very powerful 76 or team, even after Dr. J and the ABA. And then after Dr. J, there was who? There was Michael Jeffrey Jordan, who right. took it to even another level. So I used to think that Rock Hill was the Michael Jordan of hip hop, and maybe Nas came along to be the Kobe Bryant. And I think Kobe has might have more skill than Michael, but I don't consider him a better player than Michael. Yeah. But is well, Rock I would Kim, say that. Rock, wait a minute, is Rock Hill actually the Dr. J of hip hop? And right. So Nas that's exactly where I was going. I would say that the Connie Hawkins. Dr. J's and Oscar Robinson's are actually, you know, your Marley Mar, your Melly Mel's, your your uh, your Kumo D, your, your LL Cool J even. Um, and what why, the reason I say uh, the Rock Kim still has the slight edge is that because there are the other two elements outside of just being the first to take okay. it to a certain level, Talk skill wise and craft wise. Talk so there there's also the content aspect because it would be one thing if he was just flossing with skill and technique on a certain level you know Coltrane could play the saxophone in an extraordinary manner and I'm going to continue this you know juxtaposition of Rakim and Coltrane because I think they parallel in a okay. certain way but Coltrane you know Sonny Rollins was technically incredible as well but an element that Coltrane brought to the instrument was he also was in, was inserting a high level of spirituality into his work, okay. um, into his music. He was literally, as he put it, receiving the notes straight from God. Mm -hmm. And it was the way that he was able to fight his drug addiction was because of that element. And so um, he locked himself in a room, um, weaned himself off of heroin and wrote a love supreme, arguably one of the greatest pieces of anything created in humanity. And so with Rakim, his version of that, and it's interesting because he paralleled his writing style off of jazz musicians and right. off of primarily Coltrane and grew up, you know, in a, in a jazz-based family. And so that element that connected to him as a person was the way he would inject wisdom, knowledge, um, information into his skill level. So you had a high skill level and then a high content level where he's talking about, you know, 5% ideology, things he's learning as he's um, being brought into the nation of gods and earth. He's putting all of that dense knowledge into his rhyming and introducing black people <clears throat> to a palatable format to things that they haven't even heard about before. Okay. Um, so that's, that's the second aspect that's a good point. Um, that, that for me still creates a slight edge with Rock Kim's, not just being first, but also using that that platform. Let me let me let, let me push back on that. I can't, I, can't, I can't I can't disagree with anything you're saying about Rock Kim's impact when it comes to knowledge and spirituality and code in the music. We thank him for that. That was extremely revolutionary. But I would counter with Nas's ability to be very creative as a writer when it came to storytelling. When you talk about I gave you power the juxtaposition or the, uh, I don't know the po poetic term about it, but him him speaking from the perspective of being a gun. When you talk about... Uh, personification. Or, personification. When you talk about uh, stillmatic, rewind, rhyming a story backwards. I mean, and then Nas also had a deep level of consciousness, uh, not just on the street level, but if, but if I ruled the world, positive songs like I Know I Can, speaking to the children. I mean... I don't know if Rakim went to that level of, of creativity quite like 
Nas was able to do in his career. You know, hip hop has moved on and became more commercial, more advanced. He probably had more opportunities to do that, but he well, didn't you know, do that. Nas I would, one, I would say that what you just illustrated is the reason that it's a small edge and not a large one. Okay. But also, I would cite, you know, some Rock Kim records like, you know, Mahogany, right? Um, Ghetto with the storytelling, Casualties of War. Yes. You know, there are some examples. <laughs> yes. Um, I think about I think Nas's Nas's examples of that are, are probably an evolution of you know of him of building it. on 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 the art form in his own way. As live performers, they're they're that's almost a wash actually. Yeah, Nas I mean, they actually both for, walk back and forth. For right. <laughs> Nas actually forgets his rhymes sometimes. It doesn't matter because his catalog is so strong. Rakim right. did with Eric B had a level of intensity that I don't think I haven't seen many people match in his live performances in that era, but when you see him since, it probably doesn't carry the same type of weight. Like, seeing Rock him live in 2023, 2024, is not like seeing him in 1988 uh, or something mm -hmm. like that. But at the same time, I, I don't think, I think both of them are good live performers, but uh, they're both of them have two of the greatest hip hop albums of all time. But I think Illmatic, even though paid in full, was revolutionary in what it introduced to the art form in terms of internal rhyme scheme. Uh, Illmatic was like the father of modern classic albums. Illmatic, if it was one album that I had to have someone listen to to say this is what hip hop is, I may go to choose Illmatic over paid in full. Yeah, I have to agree. I have to agree with that. Um, they're both high, they're both very high up there in the echelon, of, you know, of, of classics and all that. But um, I would say that my my third though okay. my third that I guess gives the extra half of a half of an inch to the inch and a half. Uh, Pause. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. <laughs> that uh, <laughs> that is the the rock him uh, the rock him. Um, it's, it's, it's you're, st <laughs> you're stumbling, Vic. You're you're gonna say the rock him, the rock him edging, but that's also possible. <laughs> but uh, you know the 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 deciding you know factor in 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 my my analysis, um, I would say you know the overall uh, impact of the writing um, is something that is that is unparalleled in the annals of hip hop because. Um, yeah, Nas, you know, you know, classic, you know, lyricist as well, and you know, has some of the most memorable verses and and all of that. But I think going along with you know being the 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 the, the person who set the standard where it, where it far beyond where it was previously, yes, um, raised the bars so to speak. Um, is there's just such a litany of rock and quotables. Um, that, there are a lot of rock and babies. So many people. Rock Kim is the most quoted writer in hip hop, the same way James Brown is the most sampled musician. I can't debate that. I can't debate that, that. But that that is a that is a hell of a of a flag. To I, I cannot debate that. I cannot debate that. But what I what I'll push back on, not really even push back, but my final point, and I think the most damaging thing against Rock Kim and for Nas is that Nas had a better overall career. He had more output. A greater work over a, a longer period of time, whereas Rakim took his foot off the gas. He had a chance to really uh, put, uh, double, triple down on the fact that he was the GOAT in 97, 98, 99. He didn't want to. He didn't, have, he didn't show the fire to continue. When he signed with Dr. Dre, and mm -hmm. I know there were reasons that, uh, spiritual reasons that he may not have wanted to do the work, but he could have possibly uh, found a way to compromise to at least come out with the album. A lot of a lot of the records that ended up on Get Rich or Die Trying or Fifty Cent's album were meant for Rock Him. Twenty One Questions in the club. There's certain, and even when Rock Him got away from Dr. Dre, what was to stop Rock Him from calling up Primo, calling up Pete Rock, calling up Just Blaze to make an incredible hip hop album? He was still uh, looked at. There's only like three artists in the '80s four artists that people even gave a damn about that was still relevant in the 2000s that people wanted to hear. Rock him, KRS-One, Big Daddy K, and maybe LL Cool J. That was pretty much it. And Rock him was the most revered of all of them. And he did nothing with it. But Nas has continued to grow, mature, and get better, uh, and to continue to come out with projects that were on a classic level. I can't really... 
I mean, I love Rakim. He's probably my favorite, even over Nas. But I can't continue to put him in the number one spot when it's clear that I feel like his protege has probably surpassed him and evolved past what Rakim actually did overall as a career. Well, while I think Nas uh, has set a new standard with not one but two classic trilogies, um, I think that it is the trilogy of uh, of, of Rakim um, PowerPoint uh, breakdowns that I've illustrated that actually is the combination of them is what gives Rakim the edge is that one, setting this, the precedent is a big deal. Um, two, he's put in his rhyming knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that fifth element of hip hop even yeah, more minute. than Nas has and and then also the impact of, of the legendary um, pin game. Those three all together for me currently still gives Rakim William Griffin III the slight edge over Nasir Jones. Okay. So I, 